Hello folks, I hope you're doing all right today. I'm coming to you from Big Spring. It's one of the two churches I serve. Hope y'all are having a good Holy Monday. This is all part of Holy Week. I hope you're going through lots of the Bible and reflecting on what Jesus did for us. Yesterday we celebrated his triumphal entry into Jerusalem that he rode in on a donkey. Not a white horse with a sword that would be a sign of a conquering person, but more of defeat or also peace, riding on a donkey, on a humble colt. He came in humbly. I mentioned how he comes in to not to beat us down or to conquer us, but hoping that we will choose to submit to him. Of course, if you've read on through the next section of Matthew, you may be thinking, you said he wasn't going to snuff out any wicks or break any bruised reeds, but I'll just read it here and it'll make a little bit more sense. We'll be picking up at verse 12 in the 21st chapter of Matthew. Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did, and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. They became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read out of the mouths of infants and nursing babes? You have prepared praise for yourself. He left them and went out of the city in Bethany and spent the night there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, he doesn't come to put out the smoldering wick or break over the bruised reed for those who will submit to him, who will draw to him. He healed the lame and the blind. He cared for those that had need. But if we are stiff-necked, like so many times it is referred to as the children of Israel, again, we are brought into their heritage by God's grace and forgiveness. We need to make sure we don't become like the stiff-necked children who had to be disciplined, who had to be set right, in this case, had to be run out of the temple. God wants to welcome us, but we need to humble ourselves. We need to seek to follow His way. I love to talk about Jeremiah 29, 11, where it says the Lord has plans for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us a hope-filled future. If we want that future, if we want to gain all we can from this time of isolation, this time of being set apart, then we need to be spending this holy week especially reading scripture and drawing close to God to be like those children and give him thanks and praise, to declare, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna to the son of David. We need to be giving God thanks and praise to trust that even in this time that nobody anticipated, this time that nobody planned on, that we can gain something wonderful from this time, that we can be stronger, that we can be better. And when we get to come back to places like Big Spring or my other church, Clover Hill, or whichever church we might choose to go to, or maybe we need to find a church, that we can discover truly how great is the love of God and we can rejoice and be thankful in each and every day. Blessings to you. I pray you are well. And I pray this Holy Week is continuing to draw you closer to the one who is able to do more than we might ask or imagine. To God be the glory. Bye-bye.